I know I'm a little late with this, but hey, better late than never, right? I've been a huge fan of the Monster Hunter series for years. There's just something so fulfilling about these games, and... And... Actually, wow. That guy should stop letting his girlfriend cut his hair. Anyway, Monster Hunter World, the latest game in the Monster Hunter franchise, was such a large hit that Capcom had to port it over to PC. And while the PC port of the game turned out to be a little less than stellar, as is visible by checking the Steam reviews, the game itself is still some of the most fun I've had all year. So, if you're a fan of fucking up giant monsters and want to join me on my first day in Monster Hunter World, then let's do this. Character creation isn't too bad, it's nothing groundbreaking, you can't really customize all that much of your character, at least, you know, not with sliders. You're given a selection of different bases, some of which are absolutely beautiful, and others that make me question what the developers were smoking at the time. I felt like, since I was going to be living in this world, this virtual world for quite some time, I'd go ahead and make a character that best resembled me. And this is what I ultimately ended up with. Now. I am no artist here, but that is pretty fucking impressive. Finally, you're given the ability to customize your own feline companion, and naturally I modeled mine after my own little puppy. I know, I know. I'm very, very good at this whole customization thing. Huh. meow -de doo And welcome to your no doubt super invaluable peppy friend that will totally avoid any and all dangerous situations you come across in-game. Yep, I am more than certain she will never, ever need saving from anything. A few moments later. Oh, hey, it's you! And within oh, seconds of beginning the, the game, we are already trapped on a deadly island with perhaps the most useless uh, character we ever. Have to do something. No, no, actually, what we need to do is get off whatever the fuck we're on and get the fuck out of here. And there we have it. The first glimpse of this insanely gorgeous game. Like, seriously, this is perhaps one of the best looking uh shit. Game over. Again, fucking beautiful looking game. I cannot wait in all due honesty to begin exploring this. A few moments later. <laughs> oh god, fucking damn it. Okay, we made it to safety. Now all we have to do is follow this path to the camp where we'll find the rest of what our people, regroup track? and- Wait, no, what are, what are you doing? No! No! There's more over there! Let's check it out! No! Let's not check it out! Stop running off! You're going to get us killed! You... Oh god, fucking damn it. This way, hurry. Okay, let's go. Yeah, all right, you guys uh, you know, go on right ahead. I'll I'll be back here following Move. cautiously behind you. That is not good. Oh god, fucking waiting? damn it. I'm uh, I'm I'm good. I I feel much safer over here. He can't see me back here. Come on! I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'm gonna get the fuck up out of here. This shit, I'm out. And here we have the main base of operations. Finally, a place to dump my friend. Uh to leave my newfound friend in a safer environment. I'll feel much better knowing she's safe and can't get me, I mean, herself killed anymore. The game is like pretty much any other Monster Hunter game, just significantly more open. Zones are interconnected without loading screens, making for seamless exploration and combat is faster and better than ever. Although admittedly the combat was a little clunky with the mouse and keyboard, I still may do. Granted, I spent quite a bit of time slashing at the air, but I felt so fucking cool doing it. 
The game follows a basic premise. You take missions from the hub, then you go out and complete them for items and money. Those in turn are used to craft better gear to tackle more difficult missions. While repetitious by nature, it is still somehow rewarding and highly addictive. It could be the difficulty, the rush, the adrenaline you get while taking part in missions, or partying out with other players and tackling things you couldn't alone. I don't know, it's just, as I said at the beginning, incredibly fulfilling. It's time to get revenge on this asshole. You almost killed me, uh, uh I mean, <clears throat> you almost killed my best friend in the whole wide world earlier, you bastard. Fuck. I missed him three times when he was literally just walking in a straight fucking line three feet in front of me. Uh, maybe this was a bad idea. <laughs> oh god, he fell over. I did it. Revenge is mine. That's what you get when you pick a fight with an A-lister, bitch. Well, shit. I feel like there's probably something amazing down there, but I'm a little concerned I won't survive the fall. You know what? Fuck it. Oh, god fucking damn it. I've never been much of a crafter in games, but I feel like if you don't craft in Monster Hunter, there's just there's no point in actually playing the game. So I crafted myself a set of gear, weapons, and proceeded to upgrade everything I could. I needed the survivability and damage boost because I feel almost as useless as, uh, what's her name again? Regardless, with all this new shiny gear, I felt invincible. I barely took damage before. Things should be a piece of cake now, right? So I learned that there's actually a lot of story in this game from what I can tell. Plenty of story missions, side missions, and event missions, providing a lot to do overall. I can see how this game continues to keep players so highly entertained for long periods. So after everything was said and done, I finished my crafting up, got my feline companion looking like an Amazonian warrior, and was ready to set back out. This was when I learned I could fly, or at least grapple onto things that could fly. Although admittedly, I wasn't able to control it, and it took me all the way up to some weird nest. Way, way off course. And I had no easy way of getting down, so, you know, that was great. Thanks, bird. Okay, I finally made it back down to, uh, what's his name, and... Hey, don't look at me, bro. Ah, <sighs> naturally, it fell to me to kill the chicken thing. Yep, the big strong dude that saved us earlier couldn't be asked helping us. Nope. Instead, he left it all to the new guy. Or girl. Or maybe gender neutral. You know, whatever you identify as. And great. He's running into a great Jagras. Oh, god fucking damn it. This is this is just so so stupid. Why how I I, I Can I just curl up in a corner now? I don't think I'm really cut out for this kind of work. Oh god fucking damn it. So, I think I just shat myself a little. Ah, <sighs> yep, now I regret not listening to my mother and being a doctor. And finally, I had slain the Puke Puke. Yes, it is really called a Puke Puke. I'm, I'm not making this shit up. With that, I headed back home and went off to get a good fucking night's sleep. Because hell, I'd fought giant lizard frogs, giant chicken raptors, and uh... Yeah. That... thing. I deserved a long rest. 
They could get some of the other A-listers to help them out with missions for the rest of the week. I feel like I have made the world a safer place for this moment. And that pretty much summed up my first day in Monster Hunter World. I killed a bunch of shit, I explored a lot, harvested a lot of items, and when I attempted to participate in multiplayer, I kept getting timed out or disconnected, so I, you know, I couldn't really test it. Other than the multiplayer issues and the combat being a little awkward with a keyboard and mouse, I had a ton of fun. I'm looking forward to jumping back in and doing a Day 2 in Monster Hunter World video, so let me know if this interested you and you want a second part down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Thank you for watching my Monster Hunter World video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to my channel over here, checking out another video, or following me on Twitter at Bitesticks to just, you know, chat or hang out.